Welcome, Screen Junkies. It's Monday afternoon. That means it's time to talk about the box office with Mr. Dan Merle. And man, wow. there is a lot of box office to talk about. I'm glad I had last week uh, away because I have the work of two weeks today. Yes. You know, we all knew that Infinity War was going to be big. Nobody really knew how big, and it turned out to be literally the biggest opening of all time. Yes. Everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, which this. Is insane <laughs> well we've been talking about black panther which continues to be a phenomenon we'll talk we'll about talk that about as that, well yeah. but man i mean we knew that this movie would be massive in every way yeah <laughs> the movie itself is a massive endeavor and it's just earning so much money right out of the gate let's talk about what kind of records it broke and then where it's heading from here starting sure. with these top five i mean yeah let's look at the top five and then we'll just just take it step by step from there that's the new number. There, there are certain numbers for the biggest domestic opening weekend. For a while, it was like 72 million when Lost World came out, and then it was about 114 million when Spider-Man came out. Now we're up to 257 million dollars. Avengers: Infinity War beats The Force Awakens for the highest domestic box office opening weekend of all time. It accounted for 84.3 percent of all business at the box office this weekend that is second all time 0.2 percent behind age of ultron oh, that's pretty impressive that's incredible <laughs> i mean it is true i'm sitting here um continually flabbergasted yeah. over the last few days of these numbers that have been coming out again we knew it to some degree but this is nothing short of a i mean look disney was already in a windfall yeah um they own the world I mean, they are the Infinity Gauntlet. Like, gonna, they have the stones. And we're going to talk about exactly <laughs> how much they own the world, particularly since 2011. The day that did this for Disney was Saturday. They had estimated, and the industry had estimated Saturday, somewhere around $65 million, because they were kind of projecting on, well, it, it earned it earned about $10 million less on opening day than The Force Awakens. So this is what we think. So we're going to project out. It was originally projected below The Force yeah. Awakens. What happened was that Saturday exploded saturday and sunday were the biggest saturday and sunday record uh, ever domestically and what seemed to have happened a little bit is a lot of people went and saw it on friday and a then lot, saw lot, it again lot, just and to either saw it again or the word the physical word not the rumor but the word got out on friday you've got to go see this you have to go see this you don't want to get spoiled oh my god i can't believe what happened and there was a massive Saturday, much bigger than had initially been projected, and that's what carried this movie over the finish line to the biggest domestic and worldwide opening weekend of all time, which we'll also talk about. Here we'll talk about how like this is a movie unlike any other in every single respect, but let's look at the per screen, per screen where it's, yeah. which is actually interesting as compared to Black Panther. Yeah, it had a 57,599 per screen average, which is actually a little below Black Panther's uh, average when it opened. However, that's probably because it played on about 400 more screens than Black Panther played on. Infinity War actually had the second widest, uh, biggest wide release of all time below Despicable Me 3, weirdly. Uh, Despicable Me 3 opened a little bit lower, about $185 million lower, but it played on uh, about 55 more screens. So can't count out those minions. Can't count out those minions. And and this is how, when we talk about how do these, these numbers keep you know, like I said, back 20 years ago, it was $72 million. How are we at $257 million? Part of it, yes, is inflation. But a big part of it is the fact that we now have so many multiplexes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not, a, not theaters that have six or seven or eight screens, but theaters that have 11, 12, 15, 20 screens. And they can play Infinity War instead of, you know, 20 years ago, if you put a movie on three screens, you could play it for, you know, maybe 12 times a day. Now you've got theaters that can play it 20, 25, 30 times a day, depending on how big, how big it is. That's how you get this huge number, plus IMAX, plus 3D, plus And inflation. the cost of a regular ticket is up. Even besides yeah, exactly. the IMAX and 3D offerings, just regular ticket prices are up. So that equals a huge number for one film. And we'll start to unpack what that means for all films, though, because maybe uh, it, it, it is a weird juxtaposition where you have ticket sales down for mm -hmm. the bulk of films, but then so impressively high for one or just a handful of films. Handful. Let's look at the domestic opening of all time and where this lands. So, like I mentioned, this broke the force of weekend. Uh, the force of weekends. It's been a week. It's been a weekend. <laughs> it's been a weekend. The record it's was been a, a forceful weekend. Was, uh, yes, and it was a week. A weekend 
record. Uh, it broke the record for the biggest opening weekend of all time domestically here in North America by uh, about $10 million, a little shade under $10 million. Now, if it wants to keep this going, if it wants to break the second weekend record, which The Force Awakens currently holds, it's going to have to gross over $149.2 million next week. If it wants to break the record for the biggest second weekend for a comic book movie, it's going to have to gross over $111 million, which is what Black Panther made earlier this year, to have the biggest second week gross for a comic book movie. And for it to gross less than $100 million would be now $111 million. Again, we're in big time box office territory. We're going to have, this is the word, the big word, legs. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking at right now. <laughs> That would be Take a, very, a drink of apple would, juice. Uh, apple juice drink. That would be a, a precipitous drop off of over 50%. However, big movies like this have been known to take those drops. The story now, after we talk today about all the records it's broken and everything that it's laid waste to, now the story is going to be next week when we're here and the weeks after, what is the hold? Mm. How many people are going again? How many people are going for the first time? Uh, we're going to look at the daily box of the daily records to see what the hold might look like here in a minute. But that's going to be what's going to determine where where Infinity War eventually ends up is what's repeat business like, what's word of mouth, what's the enthusiasm. Plus, starting in a couple of weeks, the real competition, Deadpool, Solo. Yeah. How is that going to affect it? Lots of things to still be written, but there's a lot of things to still talk about what already happened. I'm getting ahead of myself, Rob. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go see it again this weekend. That's just one person right there. I, I anticipate that many people that this is the kind of movie, the movie that invites multiple viewings because there's a lot to unpack. There is. It's so much movie. This is a movie that not only landed here mm -hmm. impressively, but around the world as well, open day and date and did big business. It did big business. It open day and date everywhere except one place, which we'll talk about here in a second. But there is one release record that this movie did not break. And that is when you just look at, you know, outside of North America, the foreign box, what we call the foreign box office yeah. because we're in America, uh, the foreign <laughs> box office. It did not break the, that record. Fate of the Fury still holds that as far as looking at everywhere Excel except for North America. $443 million. It still holds the top opening weekend around the world outside of North America. How does Dan Merle feel about that? Uh, you know, I get it. I get it. <laughs> and again, there is, there, is, there is an asterisk to this, which we'll talk about here in a second. This is the only place where, the, where Infinity War came in second place. So, and by a pretty substantial margin. Yeah. So a lot of people would say, like, well, if Fate of the Furious did that much better outside North America, well, then how did Infinity War do this, which is the overall all-time worldwide opening, every country that Everything it opened in. Everything combined. It beat Fate of the Furious by almost $100 million. So a lot of people say, like, how is that possible? Here's how it's possible. It ran up the score domestically. Fate of the Furious opened to about $98 million here in North America. Infinity War opened to $257 million. That means that that was more than enough to make Infinity War the biggest worldwide opening weekend of all time, wasn't even close. And again, that's not a record necessarily that people were going into this weekend saying like, oh, it's gonna shatter the worldwide opening uh, weekend record. Nobody really knew. It did phenomenally well in just about every country that it opened in, but there is one country that it did not open. And the fact that it did as well as it did uh, despite this, is another big story. It did not open in China this weekend. Yeah. It doesn't open in China for another two weeks. Uh, so the fact that it has made so much money worldwide and had such a huge opening weekend, and it hasn't opened yet in China. Age of Ultron made $240 million there in its entire theatrical run. Civil War made $180 million there. It is going to make a lot of money in China not even open there yet. Yeah, and that's another thing that's going to play into this conversation as we move forward in terms of its totals. But the thing that impresses me about that, if I'm honest, mm -hmm. aside from what you just said, is that despite having this huge market not accounted for, is that Fast and the Furious, and we've talked about this before, was always and inherently, and even from the start, it was a diverse movie, and then it became a global movie yeah. that had global appeal. And Fate of the Furious, though it's eight movies in, you can see it on its own, and you can sort of get it. It's people driving around in cars. Yeah, um, and it's and only and it's a new global franchise yeah. in the sense that it, it has just recently begun selling itself as, as a, global a global thing kind yes. of movie. And so, but versus 
the MCU, which is so embedded here, and Marvel is so embedded here and globally, mm -hmm. but this is a movie that you had to, and we've said it a lot before, have been invested into at this point. So the fact that it is such an unusual movie that you have to be invested 18 movies in mm -hmm. and it's doing this well, yeah. Kevin Feige, man. I don't know what he's getting paid, but pay the man more. Yeah. Let's talk about those Avengers records. They can afford it. Yeah. So this is just kind <laughs> yeah, of. They can. Uh, this is they just can kind of a country. A, they can afford. They could buy. You know, I don't know. Uh, let's say Belgium. Yeah. Buy Belgium. Buy Belgium. You earned it. Why Disney. not? Uh, this is just kind of a snapshot of the records that uh, the that Infinity War holds as of now. Highest domestic opening weekend, highest worldwide opening weekend, all-time best Saturday gross here domestically, all-time best Sunday gross here domestically, obviously all-time best April opening, all-time best PG-13 opening, the fastest movie to ever get to 150, 200, and $250 million, and it outgrossed all but nine 2017 releases just this weekend. If we were to transport, use the time stone to go back to 2017 and put Avengers That's Infinity insanity. War, if it made no more, if it made not one more dollar, it would have been the 10th highest grossing film of last year. Do you feel bad for the other movies? Even just looking at that opening graphic, it's like the piddling $4 million just looks so sad. It does feel bad. I do feel bad for the other movies in a weekend like this. You know? It's like, made $257 million. Oh, Rampage, what'd you make? Seven. Seven. <laughs> it is a little bit. Uh, it's a little sad. It's a little sad. I do feel a little bad. So there have to be, you know, you can't just pull everything out of the weekend, but there is always going to be that. Good for you, A Quiet Place. <laughs> yeah. you, went, you went into double digits. And you're hanging in there. You're, you're hanging a little in. film. You can yeah. do it. Um, the opening weekends daily. Let's yeah. break that down. So this, I wanted to kind of break down how did it go about beating The Force Awakens record here in the U.S., which was a phenomenal, you know, success when it did it almost three years ago. Uh, the Force Awakens had a better opening day. This is basically, if you're looking at, these are the top five opening weekends uh, of all time. I'm sorry, no, that's that's the MCU. Uh, we've got another one that's uh, for uh, the should be number seven for opening weekends, the top five opening weekends of all time. Uh, the Force there Awakens, you yeah, as you can see, Force Awakens now number two. It had a better opening day, 119 million dollars. But again, if you look at Saturday, look at how much look at how much of a bigger Saturday it had than all of the other movies uh, in the, on that list. Sunday as well, again, a bigger day. That Those are the two biggest Saturdays and Sundays that we've ever had domestically. Um, and again, what what does this point to? I think, first of all, it's it's maybe pointing to the fact that it, it was per, it's perhaps a little less front-loaded than the Star Wars films, yes. uh, particularly, and The Last Jedi in particular. Um, and percentage-wise, um, looking at the day Saturday to Sunday, it's about on par. You know, once you kind of average everything out, it's it's tough when you have a movie that made so much money on its opening day to kind of wrap your head around the percentages because you're going to have a bigger drop Friday to Saturday because mm -hmm. you made hundred million dollars on Friday. Uh, but I think considering that it's already halfway to being one of the top ten gr highest grossing movies of all time here in the United States, I think it's almost guaranteed to be a lock to bump yes. Beauty and the Beast off that list and oh, become yeah. you know be one of the top ten highest grossing movies. That's where, again, it's going to come down to what does it do from here? What is the repeat business? And I thought when you're looking at that, you know, that's how it may, broke the opening weekend record. Where might it go from here? So this is a graphic. These are the top five MCU openings. Again, just to kind of try to figure out where this might land. Um, the Avengers and Black Panther are currently the only two MCU films to top $500 million uh, and $600 million. When you look at how it does day to day, it had a, obviously a better opening than, than any of those. Uh, percentages are always a good chance to look at. And, and I especially like to look at Sunday because, you know, you kind of, you can lose some of the big, like, well, it opened huge on Friday. Of course, it's going to drop big on Saturday. That's legitimate. When you look at it on Sunday, you know, it had a, not a bad hold on Sunday. Mm. Um, Civil War, as you can see, had about a 30% Sunday drop. I mean, that movie had to, it had to settle for a lowly $400 million domestically. And it's, I'm sure Marvel's very embarrassed about that. Oh. Uh, but when you look at it, you know, it, it's holding. What a failure. It, what a failure. <laughs> it, it's holding in the upper level. Again, it's not the 9% hold that Black Panther showed, but yeah. it, you know, there was so much more happening with Black Panther, I think, than with 99.9% of the other movies coming out. It tapped into so many different things other than just excitement uh, over the superhero genre. So, you know, it's holding 
pretty well. It's holding as, really so well. With, with this opening weekend, percentage wise, you know, it looks to be on track to challenge that, maybe become the third MCU movie to break six hundred million dollars. Um, based off its opening weekend, there's nothing there that says to me, "Oh wow, well this thing is you know, it's 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 so front loaded. Look at the drops day to day. It's it's gonna you know it's all the opening weekend. It's gonna top out. I I don't see that right there mm-hmm. right now. It's it's performing about on par with the highest performing MCU movies. So just looking at the numbers, I don't see it having an abnormally large drop off in the second weekend, but the question is how big, you know, it's it's not it's not so much like how much is it going to drop off, but how little is that drop going to be? I feel like the what what Marvel very smartly did and they even did this in moving of the date mm-hmm. was they have marketed and leaned well into the idea of like you said Dan spoilers. Mm-hmm. And so anyone that hasn't seen it yet, I believe will want to rush to see it too. They're even still playing it in the post release. You just showed me a little roundup yeah. of Benedict Cumberbatch stopping Tom Holland from spoiling the movie, <laughs> yes. which is the kind of thing that people A is so charming and fun. It's not that Marvel put that out, but it's also reminding you that there is a lot in this movie that you're going to want to see. But the other thing is, and we've talked about this before, so much happens in this movie yeah. in the two hours and 50 minutes of it. I need to see it again just to take it in. Well, and and I was talking to somebody in the office uh, who hadn't seen the movie yet, and he said, oh, I'm, I'm worried about spoilers. And I said, well, it's actually, it's actually not bad because spoiling this movie, it's not like with, you know, let's say The Force Awakens where – it's a three-year-old spoiler, but I have to say this spoiler alert. You can't just walk up to somebody and say, Han Solo dies. Yeah. That's a huge spoiler huge. for that movie. Like, oh, my God. Like, this movie would require, like, a story and a yeah. setup and, like, a description of actions. It's, it's not. It's, it's almost so much that you have to kind of say, you know what? I, I can't. You, gotta, you just have to see it. It's hard to explain. Um, so I think that that might drive people out there to see, like, what are people talking about? What is this thing that yeah. happens that, I, you know, it, it is because it is very much. There's no. There's not. I don't think there's a sense of finality to it in the no. sense of just like well, if I tell you then it's done like you, you I I don't I don't know if you can I think it is going to drive people. There's a curiosity factor to go like, what are people talking about? I, even if you described it to me, I don't exactly get what you're talking you about. You couldn't because it's not necessarily about a character death. It's about how things are arrived at. Yeah. Um, that's important, and that's all we'll say. Um, yeah. Disney. Disney. So. They, they they control reality and <laughs> time do. and space, as far as I know. Disney's got their own Infinity Gauntlet. So I wanted they to go back. To. Come they, on. It, it seems like that. And I think we can f- figure out when they got it. 2012. 2012, I think, when we look back at this run of what's been happening the last few years, is going to be a very pivotal moment in that company's history when they look back. May of 2012 was when the Avengers opened. The mm-hmm. Avengers was the movie that sort of finally cemented, I think, the long-term viability of that the it MCU. Would work. That it would work. In the yeah. sense that just like you had the individual pieces, May 2012, the Avengers opens. It's a phenomenal success, and it proves to Disney like, oh, this isn't just going to be five movies and a capper. Like, we're going to keep going with this. October of that year, it acquires Lucasfilm. Mm-hmm. It buys Star Wars. This is what's happened largely since then. So these are the records, the box office records, uh, and the stats that, that Disney currently ho- holds. All-time domestic grocers, six of the top ten, all made 2012 and later. All-time worldwide grocers, five of the top ten, all made 2012 and later. Biggest domestic opening weekends, nine out of ten, uh, all after uh, 2012 and later. It owns single-day grocers, grocers for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So it basically owns five days of the week. Monthly opening weekend records, February, March, April, May, and December, five months out of the year. G-rated opening weekends, all ten, top ten. They have all of them. Pixar, PG opening weekends, 5 out of 10. PG-13, 8 out of 10. Since 2011, they have 12 of the 20 highest domestic grocers, 12 of the 20 highest worldwide grocers, which means from 2012 to today, 60% of the 20 highest grossing movies worldwide and domestically are from Disney. Exactly. So I think when we look back and uh, we're shoveling uh, the dirt from the bottom of the Mickey statue in 30 years when they own everything, I think we're going to go back to 2012 and mark that as the time when they really and truly made acquisitions and moves and, and had successes that set up. You know, this is, this is a pretty, especially in the very fractured entertainment culture that we live in as far as movies tv internet streaming netflix amazon 
they are dominating yes. in a way that is old school Hollywood. And, and no one else can. And and and, and no and, and and yeah, and everyone else is just they have hits. Yeah. But not like this. But not like this. They don't have consistent hits like this. They don't have this market share. And they're yeah. they're gonna have even more of the market when they um, when that Fox acquisition, I think, <laughs> if, it, yeah, if that goes through, does go through. It, yeah, it's just, and we'll talk about this later because maybe it's not a topic for here. But it is one of those things where it's like I both celebrate the a it's just the the creative prowess because it's not like they're making terrible movies and finding the success. Mm -hmm. They're making good movies and finding the success, mm -hmm. largely, largely for the large. Yeah. Um, but it's it's really the creative business approaches that I've been very lucky. Um, but they've also been very smart. It just does make me nervous. Am I just weird? It just makes me nervous. I mean, it's startling. It's startling it's to see startling. The, the amount of, of uh, dollars that they are, are personally responsible for. It, yeah. it, I mean, it, it's, it's... It makes me worry about all the other movies. Well, if I worked there, I would just say, like, I'm going to ride this train to the end. All because the this kind yeah. of success doesn't happen very often and to this to this length. No. Studios have good years. Universal, for example, 2015, had, they a, had a great massively year. successful yeah. 2015. I mean, everything they made was a hit. That's great. Disney's been doing it like every year for the I, last six years. Exactly. It's insane. And it used to be that that it would sort of trade off. Yeah. One studio would win one year and then the other, and it was there was a balance to it. But now there's no way to compete with Disney, and there's certainly no way to compete with Disney Fox. And it is one of those things we were saying before the show started actually i was saying i wish i was on a train that was like a pure like raw skyrocket success train mm -hmm. that must feel great yeah. um inside of it outside of it there's a part of me that says what does this mean largely for the scope of entertainment i'm not sure maybe nothing maybe it just means we'll get good family movies i mean i think that nothing lasts forever yeah and i think that Honestly, I mean, we'll see what happens after next year when Avengers 4 is, is done and, and there is maybe a true, not an ending, but depending on what they do, perhaps a little bookmark yeah. in the MCU. I think we we might be seeing some fracture, uh, a little bit of fracture in the Star Wars universe, at least with consumers and fans. We'll see how Solo does. So, you know... It could very well be that we have reached the peak, yeah. but the, what they've done in the last six years it's has just been beyond pretty impressive. Incredible. It's yeah. it's 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 incredible. You can't take it away from them. You can't take it away from Feige. Nope. You can't take it away from Bob Iger. Yeah. It's it's a feat that is going to be written about. And God, I wish I had that kind of genius. <laughs> I really do. But other movies did open this weekend. So yeah, let's talk about there, the other, there were other the movies. Also, the non Affinity War movies. This Black weekend. Panther came back in. Black Panther. Vault back. Black Panther was gone. I deleted the poster from my chart template. I had to pull it back in. It took me like thirty seconds. Very annoying. <laughs> uh, it was in. It was in eighth place last weekend. It dropped four percent from last weekend and vaults back up into the top five. Which means one of two things. Number one, people said. I'm going to go see Black Panther before I see Infinity War. Yeah. Number two, Infinity War was sold out, and they said, like, well, may as well go see Black Panther again. Or number three, uh, you know, I mean, it's just a really good movie. It's a good movie. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, they have, the you know, one franchise. The MCU has the fifth, first place and the fifth place mo movies in the top five. Um, and then, you know, in the middle, you had A Quiet Place. That's still doing great. It's nearing $150 million. It is officially Paramount's biggest grocer since Star Trek Beyond back in summer 2016. This, I feel This pleases me. It is. It's a good movie. It's a good I, I'm movie. pleased that it's doing so yeah. well. Um, I feel pretty, which we didn't get to talk about because it opened last week. Mm. It dropped about fifty percent in its second week. It is tracking behind uh, Snatched, which was Amy Schumer's comedy with Goldie Hawn from mm. last summer. Um, it, it cost ten million dollars less than that movie, uh, but far behind Trainwreck, which is the gold standard. That was a hundred over a hundred million dollar grocer um, three summers ago, and then Rampage, which we talked about when it opened. That one is struggling. It's it's it looks like it's going to struggle to cross 100 million dollars domestically. Um, I think that's a disappointment here in the U.S. I don't think it had the staying power that maybe they wish that it would have. It's got a 330 million dollar plus gross worldwide, which you know I think is going to offset that a little bit. But looking at how much it cost and some of the comparable things we mentioned, San Andreas made more than that. It cost about the same to produce, and it made more than that and made about 80 million dollars. They're not quite there yet, so I think Rampage may struggle a little bit, ultimately, to make a profit. Which you know we talked about this. You know, again, so much of it is not just opening weekend. Sometimes good things can happen. 
sometimes bad things can happen. It seems like Rampage might be struggling just a little bit. I mean, look, three hundred thirty million. That's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. But when you make it for 150 million, and then you add the marketing budget on top of it, it gets a little complicated. Yeah. The Rock's not infallible, um, and he no. took on a video game movie. No one's infallible. Nobody's infallible. Uh, we may have we may have figured out who wins in the unstoppable force and the it, immovable. Force. It might be that video game. Really, should we just just call a moratorium on video game I think game they're going to keep trying. I think, think they're going to keep. Well, Ready Player One is a video Ready game Player, movie, and Jumanji get, is a video well, game movie. Well, okay. But they're not based on pre-existing. Exactly. Video. So I think we have to call it the pre-existing video. Game movie we curse. we we have to because then you also add in things like war games and sure. things other films that are a good and b were the successful. wizard the wi- sure <laughs> sure I know how you feel about the wizard Dan so I'm not going to argue with that um, Black uh, Panther Black adjusted Panther. for inflation it did I mentioned that it dropped four percent it it was back in the top five and it it passed a significant milestone it's one that we've talked about uh, on the inflation list it. Pat, you can remove that asterisk over highest grossing solo movie, uh, solo superhero movie of all time uh, here domestically. It passed The Dark Knight on the inflation adjusted list. So it now officially holds no, no, uh, you know, well, if you adjust for this, no. It is the highest grossing solo superhero film ever released here in North America. Even adjusted for inflation, it has passed The Dark Knight. If it could scrape, if it could reach into the couch cushions of Wakanda and scrape together another $16 million. It could pass the Avengers to become the top-grossing superhero film yeah. adjusted for inflation. I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. Just because uh, it comes out uh, on, uh, you know, home uh, Blu-ray and, and streaming here in the next week or two. I don't know if it's got another sixteen million dollars left in it. But still, um, you know, no more asterisks as far as like, oh, the Black Panther's the top-grossing solo superhero movie. If you don't adjust for inflation, yeah. well, even if you do, it's past it, the Dark Knight. It is. So that's awesome. 11 weeks in, it passes that milestone. Um, it's great to see that movie still making some noise. I'm also, just in looking at that chart, going to suggest that for our next charity endeavor that we just live stream, live watch along these five movies. Grease, <laughs> The Avengers, Black Panther, Thunderball, mi- and The Dark Knight. Mix of movies. That is a weird... <laughs> That is a weird mix of movies. The domestic box office, where are we in 2018? Well, you know, uh, as you can imagine, Avengers jumps in at number two. Everything moves down a spot, except for Rampage. It moved up a spot, but everything else gets bumped down. A Quiet Place is the third highest grossing film of the year. Now, this is based off of last week. I updated last week's charts. Um, so if you're going off of the charting from two weeks ago, this is a little different. This is based off where things were last week. Quiet Place, Ready Player One, Peter Rabbit, Fifty Shades, all that. Wrinkle in Time, mm, don't think it's going to make it to $100 million. It had a, yeah. it had a run at it, but I don't think it's going to make it. Uh, yeah, Rampage jumping up there. We lose Insidious, The Last Key. I think that might have been the first movie that came out this year. Well, mm-hmm. it dropped off the top ten, so goodbye. Lynn it, Shea. And you have to imagine that in the next few weeks, I mean, it's it's going to be Black Panther and Infinity War up in those one and two spots. I, mm. What What is coming, Dan, that could take it down? Either of those two, do you think? Maybe The Incredibles. Mm, good if call. If Solo is phenomenal. I mean, like crazy, crazy insane, crazy, good. insane good, maybe. Um, Deadpool 2, I think it'd be it's, tough. It's it, hard it's R. It's rated R. Exactly. I, I mean, you know, it just cuts I out just, the family it audience. It cuts out a certain amount of the audience. I don't know if we can make that kind of money. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a pretty limited number of films, but things can also come up out of the woodworks that you don't expect that just become phenomena. Although, to make that kind of money, you almost have to have a $100, $200 million opening weekend. You know? And you have to, you're, to your point, it, to have that kind of money, you really can't be a rated I mean, it'd be tough. To be a rated R, it would be really difficult. I mean, you are you are cutting out such a wide swath of the audience. Um, Every adult would have to go see it twice, pretty much. Um, So it's not impossible, but I think it would be much more like a a, an Incredibles two, a solo, um, a Jurassic again. Jurassic Jurassic World is amazing, maybe, but. That's a tall Even order. Even then. Tall, tall order. order. I think yeah. I think that's that's the thing to chase now. What about the world? Worldwide box office, pretty much the same. Avengers debuts at number two. Look at that. Six six hundred and thirty nine. All of these all these movies from China that we talked about all year and Ready Player One, just one week, snap of their fingers, it's at number two. Uh Maze Runner drops out. That's gone. Rampage comes up. I mentioned that was, you know, about three hundred thirty million dollars. Goodbye, Death Cure. Sorry. Yeah, yeah well, was, we had a, they had a good run. They had a run for a little while. 
Uh, also, it. Peter Rabbit. That's a that's been a, a quiet little success. That yeah, a fifty million dollar budget. It's up over three hundred million dollars worldwide. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit for Sony in terms of Peter Rabbit was one, and Jumanji were two of their big successes last year. And in another world that in which Disney does not control the Infinity Gauntlet, mm-hmm. that would have been a great year for Sony. But it just pales in comparison to what they're able to do, the kind of numbers. Yep. And they still have big, huge movies coming out. They do. They have Incredibles too. They have Solo. Solo. Yeah. Ay vey. What's coming out this week? This week, uh, you know, you know I don't that, know why I was like upset about it. No, it's, it's, well, I think it's, it's not. Uh, <laughs> no, people know what's going on. So <laughs> you have some smaller movies coming out this week in the sense of like you don't have a big marquee draw of a 40, 50, 60 million dollar opener. You have uh, David Tennant and uh, Dean Devlin's Bad Samaritan. So you got that going. Uh, Anna Ferris is doing a remake of Overboard. Can we talk about that? And sure. not It doesn't have to be now, but at a certain point, that is to me, this, this is a Goldie Hawn, Kurt Russell movie. It is. Uh, from and the, quite a creepy one, by yeah, the way. Very creepy plot-wise <laughs> from the 80s. And it, it is the strangest movie to remake. It is just the weirdest movie to remake. It's got its own charm for being a weird 80s movie. Yeah. But it's basically, they've reversed the genders, right. which ultimately means that Anna Ferris is making this poor man her slave. Right. <laughs> like, it's very strange. A Captain Ron remake would have made more just sense so to me. so weird. Um, but anyway, we're Ron. getting it. Yeah. So anyway, you're getting a remake. <laughs> and then uh, there's kind of the more the, the cinephiles out there as far as the awards goers and whatever might be interested in Tully which reteams Jason Reitman and Diablo Cody, the director-writer behind Juno, um, and stars Charlize Theron. And Young Adult. And Young Adult, that's yeah, right. Yeah, which is a movie I really like. Um, I will be seeing Tully this weekend, along with Infinity War. At least I'm going to make an attempt to do that. But mm-hmm. last weekend, the weekend before this weekend, every every movie, or last weekend and this weekend, every movie had to run away. Yeah. You know, There just was no room for anything but Infinity War. So these poor movies... I think we're going to be looking at a sad little chart next week, Dan. I think we're going to be looking at another big, big triple-digit number, and then another little, little double and single-digit oh. numbers. Which is what this is what happens, especially when they open a summer movie in the spring. Yeah. Uh, essentially, uh, Infinity War, which we're counting. By the way, we're going to do the summer movie uh, tracking here on the show, but we are counting Infinity War as a summer movie mainly because it was scheduled to open on May second, and so we feel like we have to. Yeah. But. I, I, yeah, this is, it's going to be, number one movie is going to be Infinity War again, and it's going to make a lot of money, but the question is, how much money is it going to make? What kind of legs does this thing have? Place your bets in the comments below. What do you think that Infinity War is going to bring in next weekend? Uh... Enough to make people very happy at A lot Disney. of money. A lot of money. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We will see you next week for more charts with Mr. Dan Merle. Thank you for coming back. We missed you. Oh, it was my pleasure. And like I said, I'm glad I had the, the, the previous week away from the charts because uh, I made it up today. Yeah. Yeah. All of the charts, <laughs> all of the time. <laughs>